This is the third mini lecture for section 3.3 of the textbook. Now we're going to talk about division. So recall that the division algorithm for division of remainders uses repeated subtraction. For example, consider four, uh, 794 divided by 6. One way to do this would be to just start subtracting 6 from 794. I could start with 794, I subtract 6, and I get 788, and I subtract another 6, and I get 782, and I subtract 6 again, and I get 776, and you know, so on, blah, blah, blah. That's going to go on for a while, though. I'm not going to, it's going to take a while before I get down to where I can't subtract anymore. So a, a better idea would be to subtract a bunch of sixes all at once. Okay, so that I have space here, I'm going to write a little bit smaller. But I'm going to, I'm thinking about dividing six into 794. So I'm going to write it kind of how we traditionally do, but I'm going to just subtract groups of sixes. I'm not going to write things on top. Okay, and at the beginning, instead of subtracting a single 6, why don't we subtract 100 sixes all at once? So that means we're going to subtract 600. Right, that's 100 sixes. And that leaves me with 194. Now, I can't take away another 100 sixes, but I could take away 10 sixes. And that would be taking away 60. So here we're taking away 10 sixes. And that leaves me with 134. And I could take away, now that we kind of have a handle on the size of the numbers, let's take away 20 sixes all at once. 20 sixes, that's 120. That leaves me with 14. Now let's take away two sixes. That's 12, which leaves me with two. So that was two sixes. And I can't take away any more because I have a number that's less than six. So I know that that's the place where I stop. And if I add up all the sixes I took away, that was 132 sixes. So the quotient here is 132. The remainder is what was left over, which is 2. So the scaffold method is similar to the traditional long division algorithm, but it makes the role of repeated subtraction more explicit. And, and we could have done this with the scaffold method. Um, as a matter of fact, let me show that to the side. I should have made a slide for this, but that's fine. So I'm just going to rewrite the same problem as we would using the scaffold method. So here, when I had subtracted 100 sixes, in the scaffold method, what I would do is just write the 100 up above. That helps me keep track. If I subtract a 600, which leaves my 194, and then I took away 10 sixes, and so I'll write the 10 up above. I just keep stacking them up on top. That leaves me with 134. And then I took away 26s, so I'll put a 20 up here. That leaves me with 14. And then finally we took away two sixes, which leaves me with 12 at the bottom. And because, because I have two at the bottom, I know that I'm done. So I can't take away any more sixes. So I just add these up to the top and I get 132, 132 sixes. So that's the scaffold method. So you, you can see it, it has a lot of similarity to the traditional long division algorithm, but it's not hiding as much. You, know, you can really see the numbers there. You can see what you're subtracting. You can tell that you're subtracting groups of sixes. 
complicated. The reason traditional long division has all that subtraction is because it's repeated subtraction. That's how the division algorithm works. It's really accomplishing what we're doing here, but it hides a lot of the steps. Okay, so let's use the scaffold method to perform the division 16,185 divided by 43. So when you do these, you have to leave plenty of space at the top. I'll do my best. I'm going to write pretty small so I don't run out of room. And I'm going to start by dividing or rather multiplying by, let's say 100. That seems safe. So if I do 100 times 43, that gives me 4,300. So I get 11,885. And based on that last step, it's, it's pretty easy to see at this point that I could fit in another 243s. 200 times 43 is 8,600. So I take that away. Three thousand two hundred and eighty five. And clearly I, I can't take away another 100. So let me try, let's try 50. We have 2,150. One thousand one hundred thirty five left over. And I could take away another twenty forty threes. That'd be eight sixty. I get two seventy five left over. And let's try six now. I'm really trying to squeeze those in up there at the top. Sorry. Didn't line this up very well. Okay, six times 43. I get 258. I have 17 left over. So there I'm done. So I can't take away any more 43s. And so now I, I add these up at the top. And they add up to looks like 376. So the quotient, let me write it to the side because it's hard to see there. 376. The remainder is 17. And let's check. Because I I said to make sure to use the equation of the division algorithm to check. So the equation of the division algorithm tells you that the dividend, 16,185, should be equal to the quotient, 376, times the divisor, 43, plus the remainder, which is 17. So, you know, I just worked that out. So 376 times 43 is 16,168 plus 17 is 16,185. So that, that's correct. 
Okay, so that, that does indeed work out. Yeah, so that's the scaffold method. Um, that's one of the important takeaways from this section for the division parts, being able to do that scaffold method. Um, you know, it's, it's similar to traditional long division, but it has a lot more packed into it. So you can really see what's happening. You can see the inner workings of the division. And the textbook recommends using this rather than the traditional method. And if you have the ability to choose when you're teaching, then I would recommend that as well. At least, at least to introduce the topic. Okay, now there's also a short algorithm for dividing by one digit numbers. And this, this method kind of hides everything, but it's really fast, so it's handy sometimes. So for example, suppose I want to divide seven into 39,148. I just made that up at random. Here's how it works. Seven doesn't go into three, so I'll divide seven into 39. It goes in there five times with the remainder of four. So I squeeze a little four in by the one. Seven goes into 41 five times with the remainder of six. Seven goes into 64 nine times with the remainder of one. Seven goes into 18 twice with the remainder of four. So I get 5,592 remainder four. Well, let's do one more of these. Let's divide six into 51,945. Six goes into 51 eight times with the remainder of three. Six goes into 39 six times with the remainder of three. Six goes into 34 five times with the remainder of four. Six goes into 45 seven times with the remainder of three. Okay, so note that the homework includes sections, uh, includes exercises from sections, for, from, from section 3.3, .3, but also 3.5. 3.5 involves multiplication and other bases, and we can discuss those in class. This is the last mini lecture for this um, chapter, for this section.